Welcome to my channel. We're going to be talking about dividends. A dividend is a sum of money usually paid quarterly by a company to its shareholders. We're going to look at a dividend yield for lots of stocks. After that, I'm going to show you how to calculate the dividend yield and we're going to be talking about the taxes. On my channel, I usually value a company's stock to figure out if it's a buy or a sell. And I've done 371 companies. Of those, 216 pay dividends, 155 do not pay dividends. And the average dividend payment of all the companies, including the ones that do not pay dividends, is 2.45%. The average dividend payment of all the companies that pay a dividend is 4.21%. Dividend yield is the annual dividend payment divided by the stock price. Since stock price is part of the equation, that means a dividend yield can change every single trading day. So it's constantly moving throughout the trading day. So it's important you understand how to calculate the yield. Because if you look on a website, that yield may be from yesterday or the prior quarter. And if that's part of your investment strategy, dividends, you want to know the right number. So as you can see, certain companies pay a really big dividend. DHT Holdings pays almost 36%. And oil and gas midstreams are on top. REITs are also up there. And the reason these companies pay really high dividends is because of the way they're structured. They have to pay at least 90% of their earnings out as dividends in order to avoid paying income taxes. I'm going to go through the entire list, but you can pause the video at any point if you want to see every single stock. But I'll mention some stocks as I go through it. Exxon pays a nice dividend of 9.4%. You see lots of REITs on top, lots of oil and gas companies. Altria Tobacco Company pays 7.9%. If the ticker ends in TO, that means it trades on the Toronto Stock Exchange. Atlas, an asset management company, pays 5.4%. It's another oil and gas company, Baker Hughes, pays 5.14%. Nutrien, I know they're a Canadian company, but this is the stock that trades on the American Exchange, NTR. They pay 4.72%. Realty Income, another REIT, 4.4%. Utility companies tend to pay nice dividends because of their inelastic demand. There's always a need for their products, so their cash flow is fairly steady. We also drug manufacturers, healthcare companies, you'll see on the list, CVS 3.45%, Coca-Cola pays 3.28%, Pepsi 3.04%. You see diff all different companies. As the dividends get smaller, you see more industries that pop up. Grocery stores, Metro, that's a Canadian company, 1.5%. eBay, 1.22%. Microsoft, 0.99%. You see Costco, 0.76%. MGM Resorts, 0.04%. And that's the smallest one. Below them, it's all zero. So to calculate the dividend yield, it's the prior four quarters of dividends over the stock price. If this company pays a dividend of $2.50 for the past four quarters, that means its annual dividend payment is $10. And if their stock is trading at $200, that means their dividend yield is 5%, $10 over $200. But if you look on a website like Yahoo, you might see 5% because that's as of last night. If the stock went down $50 during the trading day, now the dividend yield is 6.7%, which is a much better deal. But what if the stock price went up, say it went up to $250, now the dividend yield is 4%. Because if you have a certain threshold for a minimum dividend payment, you should understand how to calculate the dividend yield because throughout the day, it might be different than what you think it is. Some companies give out stock dividends instead of cash dividends because this helps the company conserve cash so they can use it to grow their business, but it does dilute the current shareholders. An example is if you hold 20 shares of stock of this company, you'll receive one stock dividend. Some people prefer stock dividends because they're taxed at the capital gains rate, not the income tax rate. Taxes are such an important part of investing. I almost never sell my stock before one year because I get killed on taxes. So ordinary dividends are when you own a stock less than 60 days. That means you're taxed at the regular income tax rate, which is between 10 and 37%, depending on how much money you make. Qualified dividends 
are stocks that are owned for 60 days or more and you're taxed at a capital gains rate which is 0 to 20 percent depending on your income. When you receive dividends from REITs, MLPs and BDCs you're taxed at the regular income tax rate and not the capital gains rate so you always pay the higher taxes so that's the disadvantage of investing in these companies even though they pay high dividends. To show you how this works, say you invested $1,000 into a REIT that paid a 10% dividend. That means in one year you get $100. Say for instance, you were in the highest tax bracket, you made a lot of money, so you have to pay 37% in taxes because it's a REIT, so you can't pay the capital gains rate, you have to pay the higher rate, 37%. So you pay $37 in taxes, so your return, what you would actually receive in your pocket is $63. But say for instance, you also invested in a utility company, $1,000, that paid 8% in dividends. The dividend payment would be $80, so your tax rate is 20%, so you pay $16 in taxes, so you actually receive $64. So even though the yield is 2% less, you receive more money. What if it was 9%, what if 1% less, you receive a lot more money. So you can see how taxes are so important. Companies are not required to pay dividends. They could pay dividends, they could slash dividends, they could never pay dividends like Berkshire Hathaway. Dividends tend to keep investors happy and staying with the company for a long time. The problem with dividend payments, it drains cash flow. So if the company really needs cash to run a company, they probably shouldn't pay dividends. But if a company has a lot of excess cash flow, I'd rather have them pay dividends than to give bigger bonuses to their employees. And the way the capital structure of a company works, the top of the capital structure are bonds. Bonds have to receive their interest payments. If they do not receive interest payments, then the company is forced into bankruptcy. That is pretty much the definition of going to bankruptcy, not paying the interest payments on your bonds. So that's first in the capital structure. Preferred shareholders fall below bondholders on a capital structure. So preferred shareholders should receive dividends, but if the company doesn't have the money, they don't have to pay the preferred shareholders. They can pay it in the future and not be forced into default. Common stockholders are on the bottom of the capital structure, so they may never receive a dividend if the company does not have extra money. Besides the voting rights of a common stockholder, a big benefit is the appreciation of the stock price. If the company does really well, their stock price could double, triple, go up 10 times like it did with Tesla and Apple. So let me know what you think of the video. Leave a comment. I reply to all comments. Thanks for watching.